So today we got Richie Evans back on Worldwide Entertainment TV podcast. The last time we spoke, it was in 2021. Crazy. 2022 handling. And man, it's, you know, it's crazy, man. Like, you know, a lot of shit is happening, you know what I mean? COVID yeah. and a lot of real life situations. So, you know, it's just a dope experience, man, you know, to be here speaking again. You healthy, I'm healthy, we living. So, hey. Evans. Yeah, you're one of the headliners. Could you tell us about that? Yeah, yeah, man. Um, you know what I'm saying? You know, we had a show with, with Gucci actually in Phoenix, Arizona. You know what I mean? The uh, city that, that I'm from. Um, you know, it was a real big deal. You know, everybody, you know, we came out of COVID and Gucci came and you know what I mean, you know, I was I was I was a co-headliner on that, you know what I mean? And it, you know, it was just a great, a great feeling to touch the stage. Um yeah. For being so so confined, you know what I mean, to the to the house from, from COVID, you know what I mean. True. So, you know, definitely was a um an energetic show. You know what I'm saying. It definitely was, you know, a lot of a lot of excitement. You know what I'm saying. A lot of energy. So, you know, definitely definitely was a great time. You know what I mean. Shout out to Guwap. Shout out to Gucci. You know. Okay. Also, seen that you started 2022 with the highly favored tour. That that yeah. was your specific tour. Yeah, yeah, that was my um specific tour. Um, you know, like I said, man, coming out of COVID, I felt like I had a lot of ground to make up. You yeah. know what I mean? I end up dropping my first release off of my my EP that's coming out in January. Um, the name of the record was called For You. You know what I mean? Featuring Vito, which oh, which did very very well. You know what I mean? I think we, we topped the charts at forty eight on Urban Radio. You know oh. what I mean? So that was a good a good yeah. look. Um. You know, the momentum was working for me at that point. So we end up putting a tour together called Highly Favored just to go out there, man, and kind of reintroduce myself and let people know what I got coming up, you know? Yeah. Get the people associated with it again after sitting home so long. Yeah, man. You know Good what I'm saying? Move. You know, I had to go out there face to face, you know, high five, kiss some babies and shit. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we definitely was putting in the work, the campaign for sure. Yeah. I also saw that you were on the cover of the OTH magazine. Yeah, Can yeah, yeah. What that magazine's about? Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, out here, you know what I mean? Um, that that magazine is really in tune to like some of the next wave of artists that's really coming up and solidifying themselves in this industry. You know what I mean? And they reached yeah. out, and you know, it was a great blessing and opportunity to grace the cover. You know what I'm saying? I think that. Uh, people who didn't know me in, in, in some of those other markets had an opportunity to know who I am and to get familiar with uh, some of my music. You know what I mean? Okay. So uh, definitely was 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 a great opportunity, man. It was a great look. You know what I mean? So you know, you know, shout out, you know, shout out to them for giving me the op opportunity to grace their cover. Okay. The last time you told us you were a part of the game's label. Like, Are you still in contact with him or have been giving yeah, yeah. yeah, um, you know, like I said, even though I got my own company and, you know, I'm moving at my own pace, you know, that's my big brother. You know, there'll always be a respect, yeah. there'll always be a love and a loyalty there. Um, You know, we don't speak as much as we did because, like I said, he got busy schedules, I got a busy schedule. Yeah. But, you know, we'd be text every now and then and just make sure that everybody is alive and well and everybody's family is, is, is doing good. So, you know, shout out the game for that. Okay, it seems you got a good business, man, because I seen that you got endorsement deals with Nike and Vitamin Water. How did you yeah. get to come? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the Nike situation, man, I did their their commercial for a shoe called Nike Trunner One. They used one of my records, you know what I'm saying, as the background music for it. And they, you know, gave me an opportunity to be in the actual commercial. So I thought that that was a good um a good leverage and, and segue for me, you know what I'm saying, on a business level, you know what I mean? It kind of, you know, cross-marketed and cross-promoting me from not just being a recording artist, but also I think that it underlines shows some of my business skills and kind of some of the uh, other business uh, relationships that, that me and my team have, you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, so, yeah, and like I said, the vitamin water situation, man, you know, vitamin water is always big on trying to find the next wave of talent, you know, and giving them an opportunity and platform to put them in front of more people, you know what I'm saying? In, in, yeah. in, in a bigger surrounding. Um, 
I think they went to like 25 cities. I know they went to like New York and LA and uh, Miami and picked like some of the top artists in that, in that city and put them on one stage and, yeah. and had a big, a big concert. So when they came to Phoenix, you know what I mean? It was only right that, you know, they, they gave me the opportunity to jump on their stage and rock out, you know? Okay. For someone who doesn't know, how would you describe yourself as an artist? Um, I would say now just because of, I feel like even within the last few years of like even with COVID, you know, I think that I've just grown. I've grown a lot. You know what yeah. I mean? I said, um, you know, I'm a person who really likes to rap about and speak about real life situations. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but I also, I keep it very authentic, but I, I, I also have a wide variety of range of where I don't touch just the streets, but I think I also touch, you know what I'm saying, you know, the women, you know what I'm saying, the hustlers, you know what I'm saying, or even the corporate America cat doing his nine to five. You know what I mean? I think that anybody and everybody can take a gem away from, you know, listening to a record or two that I got. Okay. Do you believe free speech is essential for an artist? And what are your thoughts on the recent rants by Kanye and some of the censorship that he's been getting? Um, no, so, you know, I'm big on, on freedom of speech. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I'm big that, you know, everybody can, anybody can say or feel how they feel. That's their own God-given right. You know what I mean? Now, not necessarily saying that what that person is saying is right. Not yeah. necessarily saying that, you know, what that person is saying under, 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 understanding, you know, to me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I, I will say this though. Um, I will say that, uh, you know, I don't feel that Kanye should should have been censored. Like I, I don't, I you know, because let him speak. But I, yeah. I, I also do believe that you should understand who you're dealing with before you get that person coming onto your platform. You know what I'm saying? And I think that that decision, you know, what I'm saying, should have been made before you gave him the opportunity to voice his opinion. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that sometimes there should be some due diligence before some of these interviews and some of these these things go on because you know if you know, if, if you got a platform that is, you know, say majority Christian, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, you bring on a person, you know what I'm saying? And really haven't done the homework and understanding of who he is and what he represents. And he may be an atheist. Shit can go crazy at that point. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that's true. So I, I feel that um, truthfully, man, it just comes down to the journalistic outline. I feel that you shouldn't censor a person, but I also think that you should do your homework and due diligence before you let somebody come on your platform and maybe muddy the waters. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you talked about the corporate side and also trying to attract that corporate world. Do you right. think sometimes that may affect your creativity when you're creating your songs? Because you might touch on certain topics that yeah. businesses yeah. might not want. For sure. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Um, I always say, like, even now at, at, at the point, at the point of where I am as an artist right now, I feel like I'm in a mature level of mm -hmm. my, of my, of my career. And, you know, I do kind of think a little bit more before I do anything that's going to harm my brand or put any negative light on me and my team. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I said, you know, I, I speak the authentic truth, but, you know, I may not address it as harshly as I would if I was younger than I do now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand. You know, I mean? yeah. you, know, you, know back, you know, back then, you know, I was a little bit younger and, and not as mature as, as I am right now. So, of course, I would probably use choice words. You know what I mean? I would kind of, you know, I wouldn't be so seasoned of doing these type of interviews and shit like that. Yeah. But now... I mean, I think that I'm 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 grown. I'm well versed. I understand my market and understand who I am as as an individual. So I kind of play into that field, you know. There's growth, you know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So speaking of mainstream, I see that you had a record with Rick Ross. Could you tell us? Yeah, about yeah. That? yeah, man. Um, you know, what I'm saying I got a record with uh, Rick Ross that's coming out in January when I drop my EP, Highly Favored. Um, it's, I think it's going to be probably my biggest record to date. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's called Can Not the Hustle. I think that it just really thrives on entrepreneurship, the wealth gap, and just, you know, young niggas coming from nothing to something, making it happen. You know what I mean? I think that, um, you know, I want to give a shout out to Ross, you know what I'm saying, for just 
you know, you know, hopping on my record and giving it some more, some more wings. You know what I mean? But I think it's going to be a record that um, is going to, you know, propel me to the next level. You know what I mean? Yeah. You also have another project that's coming out next month. Is it? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I got a. I got a. Uh, actually, it's my street single coming off that that same EP. Same um, it's called. Thing. You know what I'm saying? It's called Pressures featuring uh, my guy J Rock from TDE. And it's also um it's also featuring my guy Eastside K Boy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, I think you know, that record right there, you know, definitely is catered to the streets. But, you know, I think that I, you know, sometimes when you make these radio records and make main mainstream records, I think people sometimes forget that, you know, uh you know, you, you know, you know, you know, forget that, you know, you, you, you started, you know, from hip hop, you started as a monster, you know, I mean? you really started yeah. spitting that, spitting that shit, them rhyme rhymes, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. Every, every now and then, man, you got to go back and, you know, show, show that, that skill set to let them know that, you know, you still got it like that, you know? Okay. Uh, the NBA season starts tonight. I know you're man. from Phoenix. I'd like to hear your thoughts on who you think is going to take it this year and how Phoenix will fare. Man, you know, you know, shout out to my sons. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, we got a lot of shit going on in Phoenix right now. You know, yeah. the owner, you know what I mean, being racist and you know, we selling the team and you know, um, <laughs> but but I think I think this year is a very defining year for 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 Phoenix. You know what I mean? I feel that if they can't get over the hump this year. You know, I think it's only evident that they're going to break up the team. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, a lot of the other teams have gotten better. You know what I mean? Picked up a lot of different trades. You know, um, you know, you know, you, you know, you got, you got, you know, the Clippers coming back full strength with, you know, you know, Paul George and John Wall and Kawhi yeah. Leonard. You, know, you got the Lakers over there with Anthony Davis and, you know, coming off his injury. And you got, you know, uh, Ru uh, Russell Westbrook and um, – What's Buddy's name? Um, what's the other other point guard's name? Uh, Patrick Beverly. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You know, you know, Jamal Murray came back full strength from Denver. So I think the West is going to be a very strong. Yeah. Uh, too. Uh, yeah. But um, I think I think I think this year, man, it, it still got to go through Golden State. You know what I'm saying? I just think that they're they're, they're the most seasoned team. They're the most united team, even despite their little situation with Draymond and Jordan Poole. Yeah. Um, I, I I just think that they're they're still the team to beat this year. But 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 don't overlook Giannis though. You know he's still the most dominant player in the league besides yeah. Steph Curry. It's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting uh, season for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so is there anything else you want the audience to know about Richie Evans? Yeah, man. Um. Just like I said, man, you know, I got the new record, um, Pressure, dropping on November 4th. Um, matter of fact, you can go to Instagram, you can go to Spotify right now and pre-save the link. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the pre-save link is up. Make sure you do that. Make sure you check out, you know, all the, all the rest of the records I got up there. And um, just follow me, man. It's going to be a very interesting year. We got Super Bowl in, in, in my city this year in February. So, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm going to be everywhere with parties and hosting and performing. Um, what else, man? Um, follow me on Instagram at Who Is Richie, Facebook. You know, you know, talk to me, I talk back. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, right. make sure you look out for that highly favored man. And, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll see everybody soon, I guess. Okay, we'll be looking out for your single, it'll be on the website and everything. For Appreciate people you, bro. Contact Appreciate you after and everything to check it out. Man, let me know. Like I said, man, I don't know if you're going to be moving around this year. Uh, like I said, if you do come to the Phoenix for Super Bowl, man, hit me up. I got a few events going on, and yeah. you know, I'll most definitely give you some VIP passes and shit like that. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. Hey, y'all, it's the one and only Brooklyn Big Baby, and I am here with Brooklyn's Tea Talk. You already know the vibe. You know how we give it up over here at Worldwide Entertainment TV with the hottest topics, with the gossip, with the plug. We the plug baby so make sure you stay tuned subscribe you know click the link in the bio you already know follow us on instagram follow us on tiktok follow us on twitter because when you want to know what's up we got it stuck you heard me